are in the process of using an old labeling system and a new one. So I'll try to explain the, the difference between those two. Um, Arizona's accountability system for the most part is based on AIMS test scores. And that's true in the old system and in the new system. With these new labeling system, the A through F labeling system, um, they're looking at the students who are progressing and the percentage of students who are meeting and exceeding as a whole, but they're also looking at the students in the bottom quartile. Um, the reclassification rate of students who don't speak English also is taken into account. And once you put all that um, together, you are able to either um, show a label of A, B, or C, which means it's passing. So I think that would definitely help the, the schools in Arizona. AIM scores in and of themselves test a limited amount of subject material and have a limited number of items. Their diagnostic value is pretty limited. They give you a decent snapshot of large group of kids and it gets more and more dicey when you get down to the individual student level because of the number of items and the fairly uh, small administration time. So AIM scores tell us quite a bit which kids are doing better in school and which kids aren't doing better in school. Uh, it doesn't really measure sub-skills in mathematics. Reading comprehension probably is a pretty good measure. Science and social studies are left out completely. So uh, parents and community members could look at grades. Once again, I'd say the accomplishments of kids. Um, some of the authentic work product they produce. The new system is going to what um, many parents are familiar with for their own students, uh, A, B, C, D, F grading system. But the new system doesn't use just um, the percent passing score on the AIMS. The new system basically is saying, did the students improve? We're using a growth score. In other words, we have to know what they did the previous year and then what they did the, the current year in school. And so what percentage of the students showed growth? Whether it's performing, highly performing, or excelling, whether it's A, B, C, or D, those cut scores are set by the State Board of Education. Most people think 70 or 80 percent is a fair passing score for a test, but on a really hard test the passing score might be lower, and on a really easy test this passing score might be higher. In this case, the old set of labels set the passing score at about 94 percent of the number of schools. Six percent would be underperforming. In the new system, only 74 percent are going to be passing schools, C's, B's, and A's. 26 percent are going to be D's. And that's a decision that's made by the State Board of Education looking over impact data based on profiles of scores from prior years. I do believe that it is important to show the progress and the data and the growth that the school has been making, but I also think it is critical for um, us to invite them to come into the school and, and look at the other wonderful programs that we have going on as far as before and after school programs, extended learning, um, what exactly happens in the classrooms as well so they can see, okay, these, you know, the teachers are working very hard and um, the, the kids are learning and the kids are engaged. Well, my understanding of the two systems is that last year, or before this new legislation, um, the AIM scores were used significantly in determining if a school district was exceeding, performing, highly performing, or underperforming. And what I understand now is that they're doing a new system which is going to give my school district a grade, such as an A, B, C, D, or F. The AIMS represent a certain period of time in the school year, three or four or five days. Now certainly we would hope that the, an AIMS score was a culmination of uh, many months of instruction. Um, certainly an AIMS score is a snapshot in time. It's an important snapshot though. We shouldn't um, discount it, but we also need to ensure that we're looking at many things in addition to AIMS scores or even AIMS growth rate. It's one way um, to look at uh, school effectiveness can definitely be able to see how what is the percentage of students who are continuing to progress and meet or exceed on the aims but there's definitely a lot of different ways to look at a school and its effectiveness not only um, the outcomes of the of the aims 
um, but also what is the school culture like, what is the mission and the vision of the school, what is the leadership like, what is the discipline data um, show for the school, what are the expectations of the teachers. So there's a lot of different ways to look at, at success, not just that um, the aims outcomes, but it is a good way for us to see uh, the teachers on track in teaching the Arizona State standards and how are the students progressing. There's a pretty uh, broad body of research that shows a connection between parental involvement and the achievement of kids. So we know it's important. There's also some research that shows the connection of our communities and our families in Arizona has been struggling over the years. And so people in education are doing uh, lots of creative things to try to engage families with their schools. On the onset, I would sit there and think that if my child's school doesn't receive a high grade, I'd initially have concern. However, understanding all the components that go into a good school system, I'll take more time to pay attention as to what those things are that comprise that score, and then really look at my child to see how have they done in the past year and what growth have they shown. No individual uh, single measure really is the total story of the district. It's the composite of those all together that combine to tell the story of our effectiveness and our progress and our growth and our impact.